Hi, I'm Isabel from Mars Lab, and today I have the special opportunity to speak to one of the most well-known astronauts in the world and fellow Canadian, Commander Chris Hadfield. Thanks, Isabel. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. One of the unique things about being an astronaut is the job that you're going to do in orbit is uh, complex. Uh, the stakes are very high because the, the equipment is very expensive and it's often life or death. And you only get one try. So how do you prepare for something that is very complex, is life or death, and you only get one try? How do you get ready to do that and not just be uh, paralyzed with fear or uh, make a mistake and not be successful? And the only way that you can do that, number one, is to uh, study a tremendous amount to understand everything about the equipment that you're working with or the task that you're doing. Understand it to the absolute best of your technical ability. But then visualize failure. Visualize how it's going to fail. Okay, so now I understand how it works, but what's going to break? What's liable to break? What's probable to break? What might break? And then either change the design so, so that it doesn't break or practice how to deal with it when it starts going wrong. Practice uh, failure and, and make the simulation as realistic as you, pop, as you possibly can get into that environment where you might be underwater to simulate weightlessness, or you might be um, in a virtual reality lab to get a sense of the three direct dimensions, or you might be, um, whatever, out on, on uh, uh, some psychological task, out working in a desert or in the Arctic or something to get the right psychological set of conditions, and then practice it over and over and over and over again until you have built up a way to uh, increase your odds of success so that you're confident. So you come in knowing it's not going to go as planned, but no matter what fails, I've got a way to, to deal with it. And that's the only way that we can uh, fly rocket ships or the only way that we can uh, go live on spaceships. I don't know anybody more positive than astronauts. Um, and visualizing failure makes you positive rather than just worrying about stuff or crossing your fingers or just being fearful uh, actually visualize what's going to fail but use that as your impetus to get better for things and so uh, I, I think it's really critical to to understand the necessity to to visualize failure and then realize how you're going to deal with it Uh, there are a couple big differences that are going to face the first crew to go to Mars. One is the inability to return. No matter what fails on your spaceship, uh, no matter what problems you run into, you do not have a lifeboat. You can't come home. You cannot stop what you're doing and turn around and come back. So that changes a lot of the rules. I mean, uh, should we take out those people's appendixes before they launch? Just because if one of them gets appendicitis on the way to Mars, what are you going to do? You know, what, what is the, the physiological requirement of that crew? And psychologically is the other big difference in that you uh, are not going to be able to have a real-time conversation with Earth ever again. Everything is going to, because of the huge distance between, everything is going to be a recorded message. You can only talk to people's answering machines for the rest of your life. Or you can prepare a video and send it, and they can prepare a video and send it to you. So psychologically, you will split from Earth. You will no longer be Earthlings. Just a few weeks into the voyage on the way to Mars, that crew is going to become Martians in their mind. They won't be part of Earth anymore. So that combination of having to be completely self-reliant and, and be able to fix everything on board without ever returning to Earth and the psychological transition to being Martians. It's going to take a really special group of people to be the first settlers that, uh, that go all the way to the Red Planet. Mars One is, uh, is just a, a theoretical exercise of discussion. And I think it's really good because it's demonstrated the huge level of worldwide interest in exploration. But there are no spaceships. There's no spacesuits. There's no landing vehicle. There's, you know, there's none of the things that you actually need. So it's interesting thought experiment, but, but that's not going to get us to Mars. Um, astronauts, I, th I think people have a misimpression of what astronauts do. We invent spaceflight. We uh, help with spaceship design. 
We, we invent space flight operations. We develop all the procedures that allow space flight to be successful. We're involved with the flight for years and years and years to help make it have a chance of success. You don't just go to astronaut school and then get on a spaceship and go for a ride. It's, you, know, you don't get a little certificate or something. That's not how it works. It's, it's a hugely interactive process to, to operate a spaceship. And uh, I think we're, we're decades and decades away from going to Mars. We have so many things we have to invent first to be able to overcome those obstacles of uh, not being able to turn around and come home, the psychological impact, and the fact that that crew uh, has to be able to only rely on themselves to do everything. I mean, obviously, machines are vital, right? Machines are absolutely necessary. It's the machinery and tools and robots and inventions, that's, that allows us to do so many of the different things that we do. So you don't have to be physically present to do every single thing in your whole life. And uh, the pattern that we're following, I think, is the really logical one, and that is to send out probes, to send out uh, sensing systems, to send out extensions of ourselves, to try and figure out what's there, uh, what is the history of the place, is it a place that people want to live? Is it a place that people can live? Uh, what are we going to need when we get there? What resources really exist? How interesting is it? And then we will eventually start to send people. And that, that process of sending out a probe, learning about a place, and then sending people is, is what we've always done on the surface of the Earth. We, we send out exploratory missions and then we start to move there. It's what we started doing in space for the last 15 years. We sent out probes for the first 35 years, and then we started living on the space station as a species 13 years ago. And I think we'll go from there eventually to the moon and eventually to Mars just as a natural extension of human exploration. And it'll always be a cooperative effort between machinery, which robots are just an extension of that, machinery and people. It's, it's, um, it's how we always do everything. Uh, I'd love to go to Mars, but it, of course it completely depends on the spaceship and what we're going for and who I'm going with, right? That, that's, that's the real key to the question. It's the easiest part is saying, yes, I want to go to Mars. The hard part is everything else. <laughs>